Okay, welcome back to another episode of uh, Cooking with Mr. Dan. Today we're going to be uh, doing a product review. Uh, as you guys have been following me, I'm, we've been doing the carnivore diet. And uh, anyway, so the other day I was telling my wife I wanted to try some cube steaks because I haven't had them in a while, number one. Number two, uh, it's just different than eating a regular steak. We just cube it up and then I cooked it in a slow cooker. At any rate, she really liked them. So... Penny being Penny, she went and got me an attachment for the KitchenAid. That's a tenderizer slash cuber. And that's what we're going to do today is show you guys what we got. So let's go. Okay, so here you can see standard old KitchenAid that I've, I've used the heck out of this thing. I made pizza dough, uh, made sausage, cut meat, ground beef, all kinds of stuff. So anyway... Also vegetables. Anyhow, let's go over here. We got some. This is a, a shoulder uh, piece of beef. Um, we got this on sale, quick sale. A lot of people don't like buying these because they're kind of tough. Well, I'm going to show you if this, as long as this works good, we can show you how to do this. I had this in a meat shop. We had a commercial grade cuber. You just take one inch cubes of meat and throw them in there. I thought that's why they called it a cuber, but then you find out the little teeth in there make a little square. That's where the cuber came from. And then this here is the supposed cuber that my wife got. Okay, I haven't looked in a box yet, but my wife took a peek just to make sure what was in there was in there. No surprises. So it's a basic box. Everything on the top, it's just, it's a tenderizer attachment, what they call it. But it's a tenderizer slash um, cuber. That's where you get your cube steaks from. Anyway, gives you some directions how to hook it up and what to do. Uh, it says don't cut your steak, pork, venison and uh, to a thickness of two, two centimeters plus or minus. Meats, meats need to be defrosted 80-90%. In other words, they still need to be cold, just like when you're grinding them up. Okay. Next item up for bids, we have a... Mm, Tooth of all a brush looking thing. It's got a let me take it out of here because I'm sure we're going to need to clean this thing pretty good anyway. Like a regular toothbrush here, and it's got some bristles on top. Then we got uh, some kind of a pick. <laughs> okay, so let's take this out. Okay, so what you got here, this I believe is just going to be like a cover. Yep, this is just a cover for, and be careful of these, they should be pretty sharp. But anyway, as you can see, this just spins freely, which is nice. It spins really nice. So this product was made in China, but as long as your meat fits to that slot, you should be good to go. Let me just take a piece here and see it's going to fit right in there. So let me real quick rinse this off and um, we'll be right back. Okay, so I washed it pretty good and I hope I got all the soap out of there. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, like all the KitchenAid attachments, they flip right in the front here. Okay, make sure it's locked into place good. Turn that little thumb nut as tight as you can get it. Okay, so it spins pretty good. Now we got the. <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys a view right here. I'm going to turn this on. And we're going to. And when you do this, when I used to do this at the meat shop, we used to rotate it two or three times past. That's what you need to do. But you want to rotate the meat, and you can get this thing as flat as a pancake or even thinner. So that little piece of meat, as you, as you can see here, I'm going to... Just to give you a little reference here, that's what we had, and that's what we got. Now, if you want to run it again, just put it in there. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to do another one. Okay. 
I know I'm a little quick with this, but I used to do this at the meat shop. It was my favorite part. <laughs> Running to the cube. But we used to use top round, like the London broil meat. Anyway, so there you have it. Now I want to give you guys a top view of it as you can see how everything's spinning. Those blades in there, they're made out of aluminum, so no rust. Okay, here's all you do. Drop it right in the chute. Well, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. It's the first time using this. But same principle as the commercial grade. You can run it through as many times as you want. Like I said, rotate it so you, you know, it gets an even tenderizing or an equal cubing. All right, there you go. I trimmed this up, you know, today for the dog. I gave the dog some extra trimmings off of here. I wanted to get the fat, the uh, extra silver skin off because I didn't want to have that going through there. And as you notice, I'm just as I'm picking it up, I just turn it another way. I don't put it in exactly the same way each time. And uh, it's working pretty well. So, so far, I would have to say just like all the reviews said, it was pretty dang good. I think it was like 4.8 out of 5. All right. Anyway, this is a quick view, a quick review. Uh, is it worth the money? I paid $62 or $63 for it if you want to look at it that way. Um, I will say if I can get some nice meat out of this, these look nice, just like it's supposed to be. Uh, I think it's worth the money. Um, it's not, you know, not kitchen. It says KitchenAid a tenderizer on the box, but I don't think that... Uh, KitchenAid made it, could have, but didn't say the normal KitchenAid. It has the colors of the, the KitchenAid logo, red and white on the, the paperwork, but at any rate, let me let you guys go. Just wanted to show you, so let me know what you think. I say this is, uh, right now, this at least, what I can tell, uh, it's doing the job, and we're getting some nice steaks out of this. Now, you can use any kind of nut. Now, meat, you can use, don't put no chicken in it, nothing soft, no liver, uh, but you can use probably pork if you wanted to, uh, beef, venison, wild game, like that. You don't want to put no chicken or nothing in it because you don't want to get sick. All right, guys, so let me know what you think. Uh, this is my last piece here. I will probably shot more time than this thing really needs, but I would say it gets, uh, so far, almost a five. I should say five, but... I don't want to go past the uh, reviews that was on Amazon. But it seems to be doing the job now today. What I'm going to do with these, we're going to throw these like I usually do with uh, little tougher cuts of meat. This will help it be a little tender, but I usually take it and throw those in the crock pot, make some nice gravy with it. The gravy is the just natural juice. So anyway, until next time, my friends, stay hungry, and when you are, Come back and we will give you another delicious dish just like this. This ain't a dish, but it can be. Alright, so we're out for now.